I'm Scott Allen Miller, and this is my everyday life living in Nicaragua. Today, I've got to head out to Managua to run some errands. I'm heading to a bank and dealing with some stuff, so I'm bringing you guys along for the ride. I don't often get a chance to just kind of ramble on and talk about my day and what's going on and, and just kind of take a different approach. We're always so focused on getting specific episodes out that today we're going to just talk about life in Nicaragua and uh, show you a little bit of what it's like driving around the country because I have an opportunity to do some recording while I'm in the car. So I apologize that the audio is not the best today. The car is pretty loud. I'm still in the old Toyota Corolla and it is a loud car with terrible windshields. So those are all things we got to get fixed, but in time, in time. But today we're just going to go along for a ride. So come along with me and enjoy our time as we head out from Leon to Managua, Nicaragua. Hey everyone, today I am doing errands in Managua. So I am driving in the rain. Luckily I did make it quite a bit without too much rain, but now I'm in Ciudad Sandino and it is raining right now and a bit. It's not like just a drizzle, it's actually raining. Uh, and unfortunately the view from the camera is just awful. So I'm not able to show you uh, as much as I'd like to, but we had a downpour before I left, it stopped. Thank goodness I could not have come. Uh, any distance in that. I would have been worried just getting, about getting across Leon, which I did hopefully film getting across Leon this morning as I was doing the show. So I do have that to show you. It, it takes about one minute, a little bit less of video time to show from the outskirts on the west in uh, Sutiava all the way to uh, uh, past the new stadium and everything uh, on the east side of town. So I'll just run that while we're uh, while we're talking. And I even go past my old house. So if you're looking carefully on the right, there will be a Super Express. We'll, we'll blow past it really quickly. But those who know my videos, you may recognize La Barrio and where we are. It'll be just before the church and you can see it on the right real, real fast. The, the actual Super Express just before the Iglesia La Barrio is my actual old house. Uh, so uh, that was my drive this morning in the rain. That is a lot of fun. I did manage to do a bunch of videos for my, my daily vlog. So I know that this is a daily vlog, but this is my travel and relocation vlog. And I get to talk about whatever I feel like talking about, um, on and, and within that scope. And that's, that's really our interest, uh, on my other, because this has become that, wow, the amount of water going through the drains here is crazy. I mean, see it, it's ending up, um, on my, my daily vlog, uh, I just do this is my day and nothing else, uh, which is nice. It gives me a way to just keep track of my life. I used to do that here and then this turned into my life in Nicaragua. So I really needed to take that boring content off of here. So that is something that I did. Um, and that's why that is different now. So for people who've been around for a long time, and if there's anyone who's like, you know what, that's the stuff that I was interested in, or for anyone who's like, oh, I didn't know that that existed somewhere. I'd be interested in that. Feel free. Uh, in fact, you're encouraged to go over and check out this vlog is Scott Allen Miller vlog. That one is Scott Allen Miller. That one's actually older. I just for a long time used it for random footage of things. And uh, now I have a vlog on there as well as random footage. So you still see random things show up there. Uh, unedited stuff that if I record cool stuff for this channel and I don't get to use it here, sometimes I throw it over there so that it's not lost if anybody ever wants to get use out of it. And some of the stuff, I've put things over there that I thought were worthless and I've gotten 20, 30,000 views on stuff that I'm like, whoa, whoa, okay. And I only have about 400 subs over there. So it's not like I have a bunch of people and then they're watching it. This is, who found this stuff? I have no idea, uh, but it's interesting. So. Uh, one of the things I want to talk about um, is, is actually make a membership announcement. So we talked about this on the live. I've mentioned this at the end of some videos, but today I actually want to talk about it. So we turned on at YouTube's behest, and by behest, I mean there was a lot of pressure from YouTube to do this, that uh, they want us to have memberships turned on, which is a function by which you can subscribe to the channel and donate a small amount of money every month uh, just automatically. Uh, and uh, help support the channel uh, and make this all possible, right? We've been doing the buy me a coffee stuff, which is absolutely excellent. That's love it when you guys help out with that. And uh, that works really, really well. I think that's been a good uh, 
process all along. I think we have some kind of accident over here. I cannot figure out what's going on. There's a truck parked in the road. Oh yeah, we know this is definitely an accident right here. A very minor one looks like a fender bender. Everybody's just walking around cars that look perfectly fine, but you're supposed to stop where things happen here. So they're blocking the road that that's annoying. But with the amount of rain, like it's not unexpected. Um, <clears throat> so, Hey guys, future Scott from like 12 hours in the future breaking in to say, don't forget today is live stream day. Dr. Jorge, my veterinarian is going to be on the show today. So make sure you tune in uh, this evening. It depends on what time zone you're in. We try to do it around about six o'clock here in central time, which is actually mountain time in the U.S. Hop in. Dr. Jorge says he's going to be on. This should be really cool. So you can ask live questions of a Nicaraguan veterinarian uh, about your dogs, your cats, whatever care and medicines and all those things live on the show tonight. So make sure you're there. And even if you're not looking for veterinary care and you just want to be on the live stream, make sure you're there. We are looking forward to seeing everybody. Uh, so the, the, the buy me a coffee has been great, but right now that's just you buy me a coffee or three or five or whatever. A lot of people go for five, which thank you so much. I mean, so many people help out with buying me a coffee. It really does. It's hard to tell you guys how much it helps and uh, not just helps make the channel possible. It also helps m keep my wife from being upset at the amount of time I spent on it <laughs> because not so much that it, that it makes money because it really doesn't, but it offsets the majority of the losses. Uh, but it really tells her how much people appreciate the show. And so she understands why I put the effort into it. Uh, so, but it, offsetting the losses is certainly important because otherwise it's like, why are you spending so much? Can't you spend less? Uh, but as you know, she sees that stuff and as she helps out with the show, now that she's doing the live streams with me and being on some episodes, she's starting to have a, oh no, your camera's not not doing the thing it needs. You need, yeah, you you need the new camera. So it's, she's starting to appreciate some of the same things that I am uh, as far as that is concerned. So that's been good. But so the membership thing allows you to uh, subscribe and then we're trying to come up with how to make it meaningful because I don't want to just make it a, hey, give us some money to help support the show. Of course, that's actually why a lot of people are going to do it but we want to provide some value as well. So we're, we're working on that and trying to come up with a plan. We're going to do some, you know, you get some of your own stickers and special recognition, a few little things like that. But much more importantly, um, we're going to have a members only chat group on Nika Abla. I'm going to try, like I right now I'm driving um, and, and not able to do this today. I have to be in Managua for stuff and I have to send a message while uh, I'm here. Um, but the um, uh, private uh, chat room is going to be a Nika Abla. So we're going to make a video that explains how to get on Nika Abla for everyone, right? Not just for members. Everybody, Nika Abla is open. Please no one go to it until I have that video up. It is confusing to sign up. I don't know how to fix that. Okay, so the camera died in the car and I had to run errands in Managua all day. So we're switching cameras. So I don't want anyone setting up Nika Abla before we get video instructions out. By the way, you like my new orange character here? He's an orange. And I want to get a video that describes the whole process. It'll be like two minutes long, super simple. Everyone will get it right and it'll just make life great. And then we're going to put uh, ways in the, our community here on YouTube where you can find each other and, and communicate so we can start having real conversations, not just during the live stream, but don't stop going to the live stream just because you're on the, the chat. But we're going to then have once we do that, and this is just in the upcoming days, we're going to make a private group just for uh, the the members uh, where we can all talk to each other. Everyone knows that they're members. You're not just making one-on-one -on -one connections with each other. We actually have a group specifically for the members uh, so we can do polls and discussions and behind the scenes and post links and private stuff, that kind of thing, all there. I don't know how much we're going to have, but we're going to have this discussion because obviously the members the people who are like actually subscribing and, and, and taking it to that level are looking at the community a little bit differently. And I think having access to each other and to me and my team, which is really just Valentina right now, but I'm hoping that that expands in the near future, especially with the membership, we may be able to expand, right? If we get enough members, we may be able to have an editor that would really help because I can make a lot more content and I could focus on making content and spend less time focusing on editing because I don't know if you know this, but I spend a lot more time editing than I do recording, like a lot more. So in some of the videos where I have like a lot of like extra videos and stuff going on, that's a lot of fun, but that takes a lot of time because you have to go find every one of those integrated in when normally you just edit through the, the audio. So it's a completely different experience. 
So things like being able to have an editor, being able to do more exciting things, get more content, the membership and the buy me a coffees, those things help make that possible. So if we could grow that uh, to a lot closer to like maybe a hundred people, which is a lot. And, and again, I don't want people to feel pressured to do this, but if we were able to hit numbers like that, that would make getting an editor a really logical step uh, and, and make us much more able uh, to, to just produce a lot more content, a lot more interesting content, a lot more in-depth content, especially things where I can go out and travel, go to different places, because I really am tied to my desk quite a bit, uh, partially because of the show, partially because of my job, but partially because of the show. So we're going to uh, make this video that explains how to get on Nika Abla. Then you're going to have the secure uh, uh, chat mechanism. It's more secure than WhatsApp, more secure than Signal, more secure than Telegram already. Plus, it's part of our community, so like that's cool in a lot of ways. It works over Matrix, so if you know people who are on Matrix other places, you can use it to talk to them. There's a lot of cool going on there. Like it's, It really is a neat technology, and I think people will appreciate getting into it. Anyway, so that is the plan there. That's a big thing that's going on. So that's some big stuff that has happened here in the community. As far as coming up stuff that people may be looking forward to, sorry, we're doing a completely different show today. I never do this kind of just connecting with the audience and telling you what's going on stuff, and once in a while, we need to do this, right? It's been way too long. And uh, obviously we do some of this on the live stream and that's a bit different. So I'm really enjoying that my wife is finally feeling that she should be on the show. So she's done some episodes and she's already recorded several that you guys haven't seen yet, mostly about Argentina, but I'm starting to get her, I'm starting to get her on Nicaraguan episodes as well. And she's doing the live stream, which I never thought I would get her to do. And she's doing hours on the live stream. Like it's crazy. Never imagined that happening. So that's been very cool. Although really her sister and our niece both have done a lot of live streaming and her sister has done some YouTubing of her own, has her own YouTube channel, uh, Morgana Rose. And uh, she does like uh, uh, murder mystery, like real life unsolved crimes type stuff, or maybe they're solved in just store. I don't know. I don't know exactly what her constraints are for the show and she hasn't done it in a while, but she, she did have a start of a show going. Uh, so those are things that her family has done and, but she's never really gotten into it. She doesn't really enjoy that stuff. She says, but now it seems like maybe she is. So that's uh, getting her on the show a lot more is, is something we're trying to do. And as a lot of you know, we're trying to get Marcella on the show more uh, to do more of going out and showing food and activities and stuff that are very difficult for me to show on my own, either because I don't know where to go or I don't uh, speak enough Spanish or, or can't handle it in the loud situations uh, to be able to go some places. Or in most cases, it's actually just that going alone is very awkward or, and this is big, I, I'm vegetarian, or as people like to point out, I'm, I'm old school, ovo lacto pescatarian. And um, a, a lot of the places just have meat. And so being able to show barbecues and asadas and, and um, frittangas and uh, a lot of the, the just barrio bars and stuff, it's very difficult because I don't eat that food, but she does. And so going um, with her or with people that she knows and, and doing that kind of stuff, is very cool and we can show that. So we're, we're gonna be trying to do that a bit more. She is in the process of moving to Leon, uh, already has a house, but is having the furniture moved in currently. Uh, and, and helping with that process is one of the reasons I was in Managua today. So those are both things we have coming up. Of big topics that people have been asking a lot about, there has been an unbelievable, probably more than any other single topic, request for information for me to sit down and delve into what's going on with Allison's journey. For those who have been living under a rock and don't know about this, um, Allison from San Juan del Sur had a situation where her husband uh, went into, uh, had a car crash, uh, someone died, and, and he ended up in jail, not prison, for I believe 72 days. But there's a lot of details around that um, and, and more of them are about her health than him being in, in jail. And there's a lot to dig into. She has a very, very popular vlog about that. They're living in Canada, um, but this happened in Nicaragua. And a lot of people have asked me to dig into that and go into details and analyze that and provide what feedback I can. And I absolutely want to do that. And that's coming up pretty soon. I've tr been trying to give her time uh, to make a decision about she has some additional behind the scenes information that she has not released. And, and of course, there's a lot of behind the scenes that she doesn't know, uh, but she's not released all of what she has yet. And she has not yet decided if she's going to. So we've been trying to give her a little bit of time to do that, but we also want to provide this feedback in a timely manner. Now, of course, we've made some episodes based on things that people need to know to just protect themselves so that uh, her situation wouldn't happen to them, uh, which I don't think is really a fear anyway, but people are worried about it. 
we want to have those expat skills out there, so we're working on that. Uh, but I am going to make a detailed breakdown of what we feel happened to her, how it applies to you, how you can avoid it, why you won't fall into the problem anyway, um, how you can help her, whatever. We're going to try to have a concise place with that information so people who are interested in what happened to her uh, can look into that. Um, there's also, I want to mention, there is a lot of people talking about a YouTuber from Nicaragua who is no longer able to re-enter the country. Uh, I'm not going to dig into his details because I don't know them. I have watched his video and I am aware of one really important thing. Because some people are worried about me, well, I'm also a YouTuber, I'm also in Nicaragua, am I at the same kind of risk? And, um, of course, anyone who does the same thing is at the same risk. But the thing he did, and he was very clear about this, nothing that happened to him was due to YouTube. That he is a YouTuber is ancillary to the story. That is only how you find out about him is because he is a YouTuber, so he is a personality, so you're, he's able to get his story out now that it has happened. Uh, but nothing, so everyone of course is repeating, oh he's a YouTuber and something he did as a YouTuber got him to where he cannot return to the country. That is at least according to him, not in any way the case. Something unrelated to him being a YouTuber or something unrelated to him being on YouTube uh, put him in a situation where, you know, his side of the story is that he was taken advantage of, that he was preyed on by uh, a U.S. agent uh, posing as a YouTuber. And he is a YouTuber, but it's someone working on behalf of foreign governments uh, to come in and and, and abuse him in, in Nicaragua, and now he's living with the consequences of that. That is his story. I'm not making any opinion on that. That is purely what he reported in his video. It is nothing to do with YouTube. So when you're looking at, well, he's a YouTuber and so are you. Yes, I'm also, you know, a uh, middle-aged guy and so is someone else. Are those relevant facts? No, not really. So, right? so you have to um, look at the story and say, what is the part that is relevant? And, and how did, you know, what is, what is the story there? So it's not a story that I have any input on other than people are connecting it to me because I'm on YouTube and he's on YouTube. That's where it ends. The situation wasn't because of YouTube, was not about YouTube. So no reason to make that, that connection. Um, although I appreciate the concern of people wanting to pass on the information. Of course, you know, we want to be super careful and aware of, of anything that we can and can't do, those kinds of things, but it is, Obviously, there are things you can't do anywhere, but this is unrelated to what I do. So, all good there. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, it, you know, it's not something you have to worry about. But there is a YouTuber who has some stories out there. Um, and all of those things do pop up in my feed, just like everyone else. And I am quite aware of them. So, I was tracking the situation before this happened as well. I didn't know any details, but I was aware of some of the things that he was talking about many months ago. Uh, so, that's not, that's not totally a surprise. Hey guys, I have to record this in a series of segments because I've just been very busy and I want to get this out. Oddly, my camera somehow, while sitting on a tripod and not moving at all, seems to consistently get loose in its base. It's got a quick release base and it, the screws actually work out of it. I can't understand this at all, but it's a real thing and it happens with multiple cameras, so I have no idea. It's obviously something to do with the way that the screw and the base is designed or the bolt, but I can't figure it out. It's just sitting on a tripod on my windowsill and it loosens up as I'm sitting here. And so the camera actually wobbles. Let me show you how much this is like. I mean, I know it's not, I guess there's stabilization. Maybe you can't see it, but it's quite a bit of wobble. And it was all tight when I put it on and it's just sitting there. And it hasn't been like sitting there a year. It's been sitting there like, I don't know, a few days. Anyway, okay, so I want to do some uh, community rules stuff today because since I posted the video about the changes in tourism guidelines for Spain, we have gotten so much hate posting and it's a combination of, of directed attacks on me, attacks on Americans, which is really weird because it's so disconnected from uh, the community stuff, um, a lot of uh, racist remarks, a lot of personal attacks, and, and just weird things that I would not have expected when we were talking about, yeah, we want to talk about like, there's this tourism law uh, in Spain and Europe is no longer, you know, the this big um, automatic place to go for uh, travel. And the amount of negative response and just hatred of other places. Wow. Like, it explains why Europe is declining, right? They ex were the example. It was terrible. Like, no wonder people don't want to go there and no wonder, like, they're showing they don't want tourists, like, obviously. And, uh, but that was the point, right? They don't want tourists. People don't want to go there as much. The value of it has gone down. And there was the demonstration. Like, that was the strongest, like, immediate response I've had to something like that in a long time. But 
I need to reiterate some of the rules and explain a few things because I think people uh, sometimes get confused. And I want to be able to uh, reference this video for some of that stuff. So uh, the first thing is, it's just a general thing. Like this is a personal vlog community. It is, we have rules. You got to be nice, can't be racist, can't be lying, no misinformation. These things are in the rules, they're written. Um, and uh, no politics, right? They're just things like there's no reason for me to have to deal with those things. This is my stuff about travel and whatever. And like, it's fine to have political views. It's fine um, to, you know, not like the stuff we're posting. You're welcome to not watch the show. I appreciate those of you who stay. And we try to be a nice, welcoming place. We can't be that when people are being aggressive and angry and stuff. And, it's, and so if, if the show makes you angry, um, watch in silence. Cool. I appreciate the views. Thank you. And if it, that is not the answer that you're looking for, then don't watch the show. Like that's, that's the solution. And if you feel motivated that you have real, um, uh, convictions about things and you want to get that out there, being angry at me or, or posting nasty things at me, like, okay, it's not the end of the world. As long as you don't do it towards my viewers or make remarks about other people, like that's okay. But Go make a channel. Take the effort, and actually, if you have a point to make, make the point, right? And if you're not making those channels, did you really have a point? Probably not, right? And I know a lot of people are trolls, and I get that, and that's fine. So but that's the first thing. And so we have these rules. We're friendly, non-political. I realize everything in life is a little bit political these days, but realistically, we're not political, right? So, and the second thing is, is a lot of people like to make accusations, and I think this mostly comes from the US, probably, because of the way that this is approached, um, about uh, it not being a free enough forum for people to make nasty remarks or say false things or whatever. And um, an important thing to remember is this is not an open forum. This is private, and it's not just private on YouTube, which is private in one way. It is my private space within YouTube that has guidelines. And so this is not a public space. It is not free speech. You can't just come say anything. I try really hard to let people rant a bit. I try really hard to give a lot of latitude. I'm not going to allow uh, falsehoods, I'm not going to allow lies attacking other people, I'm not going to make it just a spot to say inappropriate things. So there are rules. One of the things I want to be really clear about that I'm going to be super strict on, a common fake attack, a way to try to make a point when you don't have one, um, is to claim that someone is deleting your post. And I get these a lot. Um, I often get them because they often are very angry in the uh, YouTube quarantine. I go in there and there's all these things. You're deleting my post. You've done this. You've done that. Well, I clearly haven't. Often I'm not even there. And so when I get those, right, it's clear that these people are either thinking they're just making a personal attack and no one else is going to see it. So they're just being mean to me or they know their stuff wasn't deleted by me. There's no reason to think that. Um, I know it wasn't deleted by me, so it's clear a lot, clearly a lie. This isn't like a, it's your opinion or something. There's no opinion here. I didn't delete anything in the cases I'm talking about. There's times I have to delete things, of course. But like today, I had multiple, or multiple people who were clearly one person with multiple accounts, all jumping on saying, I posted this, you deleted it, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I can see the things you posted. I see the things that I released, and then YouTube definitely deleted, or they deleted. And then other people are like, no, you deleted it, blah, blah. If you say, I deleted something I didn't delete, that is, this is a community policy, automatic, voluntary leaving of the community. I am not going to allow direct lies. If it's like, you know, um, such and such country is safe. And someone says, that's not true. It's, you know, that's to some degree opinion. Now you can uh, uh, say, okay, the stats say this. I don't believe them because whatever, right? There, there's room for discussion. But saying I did something that I didn't do on my channel is an automatic, like, you know that you're lying. So there's no like gray area. You don't, you know, you have no reason to believe that I deleted it. Claiming that I did is therefore, that's, that's just an attack. It's attempting to confuse other people or simply to be mean to me. So we're just making a clear cut black and white. So I never have to discuss it again, but people can reference this. Yes, that violates the be nice rule and it violates the be honest rule, the no misinformation rule, because it's generally an attempt to win an argument by saying something false and then claiming that we're deleting the, the arguments that they're making or the points that they're making. And if that's true, that's fine. But make sure you know it's true before you make that claim, uh, because I've never once had someone claim that and it be true. Every time someone said it, either they, they had never posted it, the first person who ever did this was Paul Damon, the, the real estate agent. He had this whole thing. You keep deleting my posts, blah, blah, blah. He was a YouTuber. He knew that wasn't true. He knew he was posting things that couldn't show up. So he was doing that so that he could make posts 
claiming that I was deleting stuff to, to uh, uh, you know, uh, make, to, he was trying to make me look bad in a way that I had no control over. I never saw those posts. I have no idea what they were. Later, I got him to admit in an email that he had posted personal information that isn't allowed and is automatically deleted. So it never shows up. It never comes to me. It never goes to quarantine. So we're just going to make this rule. If you say that, you're voluntarily saying, I want all my stuff removed. That is a code to me to say you want your stuff removed, it'll be removed. I will do my best if I see that to just remove it all. So just be aware that that's a thing. Otherwise, I try very hard. I delete so little under normal circumstances until, unless there's those really clear violations. And even the be nice one, I'm very loose on. Um, probably way too loose. But um, until it's like really strict, uh, if it's, if there's racist comments, it's gone, right? You're just gone. I'm never going to speak to you again. <laughs> it's just how it is. I can't, I can't have that stuff. And if it's breaking the politics rules, we live in different countries. I have no ethical right to have this as a forum for that stuff. So gone instantly, no black, black and white, no question. It's, it's with prejudice. So just be aware that's, that's how that stuff works. Um, in most cases, YouTube is actually catching it and doing it anyway. So I never see a lot of that stuff. People just, I, I assume, because I get tons of the in quarantine angry posts, you've been deleting my things. And I look and like their stuff is still there, but only the stuff I know about. If I don't know about it, that means you either they never posted it at all or YouTube caught them and it was way over the line. And YouTube's like, nope, no one ever gets to see this. But I know sometimes, and this is weird, but it's worth noting. Sometimes, like happened to Maria this morning, she posted something that clearly violated YouTube's uh, uh, guidelines, but it also violated my quarantine guidelines. So it went into my quarantine for me to see it. So I saw some of it and saw that it was this really angry, dishonest post, but I released it so it would go into being post. What's weird with YouTube is that they seem to um, process my quarantine ahead of, of processing the ban. And so I see the quarantine, I release it, then they check it and they ban them. And so in this case, a uh, ban is by post not banning the account. I have no idea how account banning works uh, or if it, I, I assume it exists, but I don't know what it does. Um, and so I released it from quarantine and then it never showed up, which means either they deleted it right about the same time before I looked for it, because it does take several minutes even for me to show up, sometimes up to about 30 minutes. Um, and then, uh, but a lot of times I've done this and watched carefully and it's definitely YouTube is like, nope, whatever that was, that is not okay. And it's normally ones I don't read because I can see that they're really mean. And so I'm like, I just read the top, I release it. And uh, you know, unless I see something um, that, that would make me unable to release it. So that's just, it's code, say that stuff, we're just going to make the account go away and that'll be that. No one needs to see that. There is no reason to ever say that. Um, if you're posting things that need to be deleted, they need to be deleted. But uh, I definitely need to step up the, the deleting people because I let way too many trolls through and there's, it's just not good for the community. Nobody wants to see that. No one's benefiting from that. There's not, it's not like an open discussion. There's sometimes we have really good open discussions and you can see, and P, there's, we're allotting, right? We've got someone who's constantly posting misinformation about taxes and stuff, right? They just really want to make Nicaragua look less attractive than it is. So they just keep posting this like semi-correct information, but at least they're posting with semi-correct. They're like giving links and giving like, there aren't valid links but they're giving something and they're not like attacking anybody uh, directly. They're trying to make the country look bad, but okay. So that's my little information on that. It's not really a rant. We're going to get to that, but it's, this is really just, it needs to be a rule that we can point to and say, look, here's why, because it's always dishonest. And once it's being dishonest, there's no point in keeping it. And I am a firm believer that, uh, that free speech is wrong is fundamentally bad. We should never protect dishonesty. We should never protect hate. We should never protect harm. And I know that a lot of people are brought up to say, well, you're not allowed to say that you're not supposed to protect evil, but you're not supposed to protect evil. That is bad. We want to be good, right? Good trumps evil, period. That's the rule. Um, and so if, if allowing too much speech becomes harmful, I'm not going to allow it, right? Because this is a private space. It's not the public space. I understand a lot of the need for discourse in the public space where people can voluntarily walk away, uh, but also know that they're in a dangerous space, not a safe space. But there needs to be a place to point out things or else the government can control your speech. That would be bad. But this is a private space, right? You can't just let people come. You can't be like, I broke into someone's home and I started saying terrible things. Well, they have a right to kick you out. They need the right to their own space. And this is our digital space for the people who are being nice and want to be here. We want to protect it for them. 
for all of us, right? Uh, so that is that is the logic there. That is what's happening. Now we have that documented. Now the other thing I want to talk about. Now this one is weird, um, and and I want to point this out because it started happening more and more. And again, I want to be able to have a link to this part of the video <laughs> and say here's this thing. So this is all like I have this day where it's just really humid or rainy, and I can never be outside, so I'm doing a lot inside. And. Uh, uh, <laughs> leading up to the live stream today. Uh, so I get on a couple of the videos where we're talking about a vaccine, vaccine requirements for residents. And there's a pattern. And this is more for you guys to understand what uh, trolling patterns look like for this specific type of thing. You'll see similar things in different discussions. This one just happens to be a really good pattern that's easy to point out. So what happens? So uh, first of all, I want to preface this with, I am not a pro-vaccine. I'm not an anti-vaccine person. I am surprisingly middle of the road, and I'm willing to talk about that, right? I think vaccines are overblown, and we use too many of them, and I think that they are important and play a role, and there are times that they make sense and times that they don't, and there is a healthy middle ground, and it should be based on science and the else ever, right? Health should be science-based. There is no, any alternative to science-based is intentionally anti-health, right? And we should never really be anti-health. So, okay, but that's fine. There are really good arguments for not wanting to have vaccines. I'm not talking about specific ones, just in general. There's always some vaccines that are good. There's always some that are bad. There's always some that are in the middle. And, and it's okay to lean away from wanting them, and it's okay to lean towards wanting them. Those are okay things. Right. And, and there's good, healthy ways to want to avoid vaccines. And there's good, healthy ways to try to get them. And, and when you're in the middle, kind of just naturally everything's fine. It's, it's hard to be toxic in the middle. I suppose you could be, but it's weird. Right? You know, I'm really, I'm really anti, I'm just going to do whatever is opposite of good. Right. I'm going to only take the, the vaccines that are, that are seem dangerous and never take the ones that seem safe. Right. Like it would be super weird. But anyway, the point being, that there are good, healthy ways. And I know lots of people who live here in Nicaragua who are pro-vaccine. They're out going to get vaccines voluntarily. They're looking for them. They want the flu vaccine every year. I know a lot of people like that. They're here and we get along fine. And I know a lot of people who don't want to get vaccines and are trying to avoid them at all costs. And they're here and we get along fine because we're just, I want them, I don't, and whatever, right? No one has to be involved with someone else's vaccine decisions. And it doesn't need to be a thing that we talk about. Like, who cares? Like, like it can't be a thing you legitimately care about in a broader sense, right? You can care about it on your personal level. I don't want to have this, but, or I do want to have this, but it really shouldn't spill over to other people. So there's this, like, I mean, sometimes people want to know where people fall and it's just information, right? But, but like we have these healthy discussions. So I know where a lot of people fall and it's this really casual, oh yeah, we don't like those. Okay, great. You don't like those. Like, that's fine. And, and maybe people are like, uh, you know, they want information about them. Well, clearly that makes sense. That's fine, right? They're, these are good, healthy ways to have discussions or information about vaccines. I think we all accept that. Okay. So when we have these, we had a couple of videos where we talk about vaccine requirements for residency here in Nicaragua. Now we had one that caused all kinds of reaction. Then we made a second one that clarified uh, some, some details in there where people were just couldn't process the information and were getting incorrect takeaways, even though it was very clear in the video. It really was clear, but a lot of people were getting misinformation or repeating misinformation so much that people were building it into when they watched the video, they already had it in their head and then were just getting wrong takeaways. So we wanted to clarify exactly how it was misinformation and double down on the fact that we had been verified and this was checked by a lot of places. And there was no question uh, about about it, its veracity. And uh, <clears throat> so these videos were quite some time ago. And, you know, mostly there's some people who are like, oh, that's that's not great or that's OK. I like that or whatever. Right. But there is a certain segment of people who have been making comments on them, and they nearly always go one of two ways. One is like just super weird remarks, which you kind of expect. I'm not gonna talk about those. But there's a pattern that we see a lot, and this is one I wanna talk about, because it's important for people who are just reading comments on my channel and similar channels. And it was, they always say something like this, oh, oh, this is terrible. I was about to buy a house with my family and move to Nicaragua, always in that order, and we would never, ever consider going to a country that offers these vaccines. So I'm doing something else. And there's, there's a whole bunch of this isn't real to look for in this. One, why would anybody be seeking out this video? I don't know. So, so, okay, let's, let's back up. It's always, 
someone who has never posted on this channel before. Okay, They're finding it, not because they're looking up Nicaragua, not because they're following the channel, not because they're interested in any of this stuff. They're finding it because they're looking for vaccine requirements. So this is important. They're not coming to it from a place of interested in the topic we have here. They're looking for, we can only assume, videos about vaccine requirements and then finding negative things to say as if the vaccine is creating a problem. But had they been actually interested in Nicaragua, they probably would have done a bunch of things. Watch other videos, commented before, wanted to dig deeper, find out if they're misunderstanding something. Nobody, absolutely nobody, ever, ever, who is legitimately looking at moving to a country is going to watch one video from one YouTuber, maybe two, because I have two, and take them out of context and make their entire life decision about what country they're going to live in, where they're going to buy a house, all those things, based off of one YouTube video that they haven't verified. Right now, I understand we went through a lot of work to show why we're verified and, and, and we have a lot of reputation. So we're a, a really reliable source. That is that is true. But if you are to a point where you 100 percent believe you're, you're completely convinced that I am honest and I have the best source of information and it's just absolutely accurate. But you want to move to Nicaragua and this would be a showstopper for you at a bare minimum. You should be reaching out to an actual lawyer, not one of the scam lawyers. We have all these videos about that. An actual lawyer who does this and get some real information from them because they can go do research. They can ask questions. They can get more details. You can dig into, does it apply to you? How would it apply to you? What are the chances it's going to apply to you? Because there's all this information that is gray area. Now, if someone came on and said, I'm really concerned about this. I was interested in Nicaragua. Can you clarify, does this apply to me? Will it apply? Like, what is the actual ramifications in my scenario? Because if you watch those videos, we go through how it applies to essentially no one. So that all these people are posting how angry they are when we assume it doesn't apply to them is pretty disingenuous. Like, oh, so, right, you're going to move to a new country. In life, there's only a few decisions that are on par with moving to another country, right? Having kids, biggest decision of your life. Getting married, maybe might be the third biggest decision of your life. For a lot of people, where you go to university, or if you go to university, is actually the second biggest decision of your life. People just don't think of it that way. But it's actually a more life-changing, more permanent decision in many cases than getting married. Not always, but it, it can be. So those three things are like, you can't ever change kids, marriage, and university. Those are just unchangeable life trajectory things. Beyond that, the country you decide to be a resident in is really high on your list of life decisions. That doesn't mean you shouldn't make that decision. You absolutely should. You should not just accept the place that you were born in. You should go out and intentionally find a great place to live for you that meets your needs in a broad series of ways. That is absolutely true. So that's something we promote a lot, but you should not be making a decision of this caliber. And then, you know, imagine if or comparing it to getting married. I realize getting married is a little bit bigger than the country you live in, but just as a comparison, you're watching a YouTube channel and I say something, I'm not someone you know personally, and I say something that might apply to the person you're going to marry, but almost certainly doesn't. And you go, what? 1% of people who, who want to get married to this type of person have this thing happen. That's not a bad thing, but I don't like it. And so I'm not going to get married at all because of this thing that we're pretty confident doesn't apply that I really shouldn't be worried about in this way. But okay, if you are like, that's your own thing. And, and you, everybody's passionate about what they want to be passionate about. What? That's quite literally insane. So we have to assume these people are not actually doing these things. So the pattern is that they're claiming that they're making this incredible decision, but have never done any research, not going to ask any questions, not going to dig deeper, not going to find out. They're going to pick, they were planning on buying a house in a country they didn't know before they moved there, which we tell everyone, don't do that. Like how, how crazy is that? Is that, that's not a serious, legit process for moving to a country. And two, they were going to move to a country they didn't do any research on. Again, not like you were seriously planning on moving here. You didn't do any research on it. That doesn't make any sense. And you were going to buy a house. Like you were so committed that you were going to do these. Like this is layering things that are just unrealistic. And then you're going to watch just two YouTube videos that are full of locals claiming that it's false. Those are lies, but there's a ton of it, right? And you're gonna do all this and go, ooh, this one YouTuber 
has this information that could already be old and I have no way to verify. Someone asked me, I have no way to verify that this isn't now old. It was true at the time. Is it still true today? Probably, but I don't know. And I have no reasonable way to go find out. You've got to talk to, you've got to go through this process. And more importantly, what are the chances that if you did this, it would apply to you at the time that it would be necessary, right? It's not something that happens immediately. Whoa, that's just anyone's guess. So why would you make a life decision based off of something that you can kick the can on and find out down the road and is almost right on the verge of being guaranteed not to apply to you? You wouldn't. So all these things, look for this pattern where someone's making, they're trying to up the ante, right? Oh, Nicaragua is missing out on me buying a house and they're missing out on me moving there with my family. And like, they get really angry and I'm never going to consider it. I would never go to a place like this. And you're like, you know what? That is why a lot of people have suggested that they may have put this rule in place was because they wanted to see how many people were going to react that way. What's interesting though, is that they post this as if it's going to be seen as a negative, but I want you to put yourself in the shoes of the country or those of us who live here. So like I said, we have lots of people here who don't want to get vaccines, then that's fine. We get along fine. That's not a problem. And we have a lot of people here who do want to get vaccine. We get along fine. That's not a problem. What we don't want is irrational, crazy people who are going to look at making huge life decisions, buying a house, moving to a country, have no idea what they're doing, and then get super angry over one YouTube video that they didn't take time to ask for any clarification on and didn't do any research of their own and didn't further research, right? Those aren't people we want here. Nicaragua can't possibly want those people here. They're super dangerous. Those are the people who end up homeless, dependent on the state, and feel like everyone owes them something. And... That is not someone that I want as a neighbor. Like, I don't want someone living next door to me or that I'm going to run into the supermarket and they're going to be like, oh, you know what? I watched a video that claimed you did something. It was all made up, but I'm going to react emotionally, be angry and blah, blah, blah. I don't want you here, right? This is a dodge the bullet moment. If these people were true, which I'm assuming are always trolls. It's so obviously made up and it's such a pattern. It's the exact same thing repeated over and over again. And now they're still posting like six, 12 months later, however long it's been. Like, come on. Like, we all know this is, you're seeking out this one thing. And we have so many videos explaining why you don't buy a house first, how to move here, why this doesn't apply. We've dug into all that. You're not reading any of the, you're not watching any of the videos that clarify this stuff, even though that video references those videos and talks about it extensively. You're just looking for an excuse to make a nasty post, yeah, we get it. It's not genuine. But it's an important pattern to know because we see a similar pattern happen in so many videos over time. When we post something that has an opportunity, a little hook for someone to come up with a negative response, then just invariably are going to do so. There's so many trolls about this topic. Uh, so it's just something to look for. And once you know to look for it, I think you'll identify it pretty quickly and be like, oh, there is like not a ton, but there's a certain percentage of posts that are made in this pattern. And you go back and you look and you go, I've never seen this person post before. It's because they haven't. And I've never seen, like, this doesn't really make sense. Why didn't they ask any questions? Because they don't actually care. Why were they buying a house first before they moved? They weren't really moving. It's just something they saw the thing. They, they looked at what the topic was and tried to come up with something that sounded negative. But when you actually read it, if you look at it from the view of Nicaragua or of me personally, because I don't represent Nicaragua, even if Nicaragua wants crazy people to come in and be like that, I don't, so too bad. I'm not going to feel bad or not encourage people not to come because that's not a good healthy response. A good healthy response if you are truly completely against vaccines to the point where you would make living decisions based on that, then a healthy response looks like, well, I would never have bought a house first, but I was seriously considering coming to Nicaragua and putting in some time to investigate if it's the right place for me. And I need to ask a lot of questions about, do I need residency? I know the videos say I don't need it, but maybe it would be good for me. If I do need it, would this apply to me? Is it likely to be a real thing? I need to find some of those things out because you need to know if Nicaragua is even for you before you start getting angry at it turning out not to be, and you need to find out if these things actually apply to you. So a good healthy thing would be to ask me, well, look, I'm really passionate about not getting vaccines and that's my personal thing. And I'd say, cool, like, okay, how can I help? And they'd say, uh, I'm worried that this is going to apply to me if I want to do these things. Do you think that this will apply? Is this, you know, I realize that the information you gave is correct, but in my scenario, do you think it'll apply? And we can talk about that, right? In a rational way, 
where it's not being angry that there is a rule you don't understand and not being a making decisions without asking for clarification and not re watching the other videos. And it, it could be as simple as, can you point me to some videos that explain why this probably won't apply to me? Uh, can we talk about how the process of residency works and, and does that apply? Like there's so many good, healthy reactions and, and the reaction shouldn't be, I'm not going to move there, right? The reaction should be, let me dig into this if this was a legitimate place you were going to look. The act, the, the fact that someone says, oh, I'm, because of this, I'm not going to look any further, tells me they weren't looking originally. It just makes no sense, right? Nobody who's legitimately looking is ever going to be turned away from this type of information presented in this way, especially when it may easily have already expired or would be projected to expire before it would be useful. Uh, so it depends where you are in the process. The people who should be uh, worried about it are people who are long down the path and they're already here, they're already buying houses, they're already, you know, stuck in the process and now they have to make decisions. That could be kind of a upset and, well, this really affects me in ways that I'm not happy about. Well, that's fine. But nobody, not one person has talked to me, has posted anything, has asked me questions, has, has mentioned anything about this who's in that position. I'm sure someone's impacted by it, but I haven't found those people. The only people who are posting are people who are claiming that they were about to move but weren't doing their research and had never posted before. The pattern is so strong that it's always buy a house first, always was about to move, always never posted before, always not looking into more detail, not, not actually checking if it's true, always angry, always making statements that make no sense. I was leaving America because I wasn't willing to live with this. But America doesn't have that, right? America has absolutely no requirements for something like this. So there's this false pressure, like they're just adding in, like all these countries are doing this. No, it's not a thing. Um, so yeah, that's just, just a thing to be looking for but it's a pattern worth talking about because we see it so much in so many different topics on here that it just gives you a tool to identify false information. And in this case, it's a kind of like a false review. It's a way, it's not false information on a grand sense. It's false information about the poster. All right, I didn't want this to be a real rant show and I'm doing my best to make it informative and really dig, but sometimes we have to dig into these things. And today was a day where there was so much of this. I think some of this information needs to be there. People just need these tools. Our community has gotten so big and we need to every so often to talk about this stuff because there's a lot of newbies who are like, oh, is this something that's new? Does this happen from time to time? How do we deal with it? What's the opinions on like different things? It's important. It's important to have a conversation. And now that we're setting up the new members group, we're going to be able to have some of these things in that members group and say, hey, do, what, what do we need to do about this? What do we need to do about that? And, and have a, you know, a group of opinions and people who can look at it together rather than me being in isolation, which I really don't like doing uh, because now the, the risk of a members group is that a members group may be very pro Scott and be like, they said mean things about you. And I have some viewers who have totally said this, that they get like, warmed up, right? When they're, they're heated, when they're like, people are saying mean, mean things to Scott. Don't say mean things to Scott. And it's so sweet. <laughs> they're like, I've, I've hung out with people who are like that. And I'm like, oh, that's so sweet. But you really, I don't need that level of defense. But sometimes I do need a second opinion. But I do worry that the opinion will be, well, why would they, why would we let them say mean things to our community? And to some degree, we need to allow it. So I understand. But uh, make sure you stay tuned for the live stream this evening, or if you miss it, you're seeing this later, go back and watch it. Uh, and as always, uh, if you'd like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. There's the membership thing. Feel free to do that. And like and subscribe, watch another video, watch the live stream, comment on the live stream, and I will see all of you tomorrow. Unless you're on the live stream, then I'll see you tonight.